Hi and welcome to Binary Files in Java. I'm Norman McIntyre. Let's get started. So first and foremost, as always, welcome. I thank you for being here. And here's my promise to you to take you on a journey of binary files in Java like you've never seen before. Uh, one that's going to be full of fascination and of amazement and of learning new and valuable skills. So let's get started. Let's begin by asking, what is a binary file? So to answer that question, let's look at some binary files that are on your system. Uh, first, I'll look at uh, our main.class. Since we're talking about Java, we know that when you compile a Java source file, let's say main.java, you get a main.class. And notice if I do the file command on main.class, it says, indeed, it's a compiled Java class. It's data. And it was compiled, in this case, by version 5.5.0. If I do a cat on main.class, notice I get garbage output. Right? So a binary file, if we try to look at it as humans using the cat command, it just looks like a bunch of garbage. Another example of a binary file is the shell itself. We know that the shell we're using is called bash, the born-again shell. And if you do which bash, it'll show you the full path name of where that's at. And the reason I need the full path name, I want to use the file command, the file command on slash bin slash bash. And notice it also shows me that it's a binary file. In this case, elf stands for uh, extended linking format. And it says a 64-bit LSB is Linux standard base. Bunch of information there, but it's, it's a binary file. In fact, if you didn't believe that, if you say cat slash bin slash bash, notice again, we get a bunch of garbage output. Now, for text files, all we need is the cat command to view the file contents. And, for example, if I say cat student.java, we as humans can read that. That file comes to the screen. It looks very nice. But if you use the cat command on this binary file, again, we get this garbage output. And so we can see once again, if I say cat main.class, I get this garbage output. However, there are many binary files that provide commands so you can view their output. So here's an example. We know we have a main.class, that is the output of the compiler. And if I try to cat it out, it looks like garbage. However, if I use this java p command, the java p command will look at that binary file and actually show you some summary information as we see here. As another example, this obj dump command, you can do an obj dump, has many, many options, but you can obj dump a binary file binary executable file and in this case notice again I'm doing an obj dump on bash with the dash a option and it shows me summary information shows me the type of file and then an obj dump dash x shows additional information so the details are not important the key thing is that a binary file needs some type of tool or utility uh, to see the output so that's an important point about text files versus binary files is that for a text file all you need is cat but for a binary file a cat would produce garbage and so because of that these binary files have either a, t a tool or a utility some type of program to view the binary output and we actually saw that with, with java p and obj dump so let's look at binary files uh, unlike text files, we now see they're not human readable, and binary files provide faster I.O. than text files. There's also a possible issue about binary files dealing with whether it's a big Indian or a little Indian uh, data format. It turns out computers can store data uh, two different ways. One can use what's called big Indian, which stores the most significant digit first in memory. And then there's also Little Indian, which stores the least significant digit in memory first, uh, which actually the, the x86, 64, and ARM processors typically use Little Indian. And uh, other processors will use Big Indian. So 
sometimes you have to know which binary format was it written written in. So that's a, a possible issue. We're going to find out Java abstracts us from that by using some of the classes. Uh, but if you go down low enough, the big Indian versus little Indian is a issue with binary files. So let's write some Java code. Uh, we'll, we'll write and read a binary file. So let's begin with the binary file output. So we're going to use java.io.data output. This is an interface. We know an interface has methods that we can call and other classes can implement them. Just want to highlight some of the methods here. Notice you can write out characters. You can also write out UTF, this Unicode text format, which we'll use for writing out strings. Notice you can write out Boolean. You can write out bytes, ints, shorts, longs. You can write out floats and doubles. In other words, these are the primitive data types in Java. And this java.io.data output allows you to write those primitives out. In fact, here's a class that implements that, the java.io.data output stream. So we'll be using that here in just a moment. There's also a java.io random access file, which allows you to randomly access it. And there's others as well. So let's look at our java.io data output stream. Uh, we're going to create one of these streams and notice the output or, or when we create a data output stream it needs as an input an output stream and that output stream is actually going to be a file output stream. So what we'll have is a file output stream by giving it the name of a file. But you see there are other options there as well. You can give it actually a file that is the file class and you can also give it a string as well as a, a boolean whether you're appending to the file. Okay, let's do some code samples. We begin at 48, line 48. We're going to have a, a file, binary file. Line 49, here's where we create our file output stream. So notice I create an instance of a file output stream, giving our binary file as the input. Once I've got that file output stream, I can then do the data output stream. And by creating the instance of the data output stream, I'm now ready to write binary data. To demonstrate, at line 52, I have an integer, 1, 2, 3. And notice at 53, I do a data output stream write int. So by writing an integer, it writes that out. In fact, uh, after we write it out at line 55, we're careful to close the file so everything gets written out. Now, notice when I do an ls-l binary file, it says our file size is 4 bytes. OK, so 4 bytes. If I do the file command, it says this is a binary file dar archive. Well, we know it's not really a dar archive, but the system actually looks at the first few bytes of the file and tries to determine what kind of file it is. So in this case, it thinks it's a dar out file, dar archive, when really it's just a binary data file from our viewpoint. Probably the best command to understand this is hex dump. Notice when we do hex dump with the dash capital C, the binary file, we actually see the data that we got written in there. Notice this hex 7b, and we see that it's uh, 4 bytes. In other words, an integer is actually uh, 32 bits or 4 bytes, and we see that clearly shown in the file. Probably even more importantly, notice at the bottom when you do echo using this syntax, it will take a hex value and show it in decimal, and of course we see that indeed that is 123, which is what we wrote into the file. OK, another code sample here at line 55. Let's write out a Boolean. So 56, we do the data output stream dot write Boolean. And notice now when we do an ls-l, our file size is, is 5. And in fact, when we look with our hex dump, we see that we now have a 0, 1. Well, the 0, 1 is a true. It represents true which of course is the value of our Boolean flag. Okay, another code sample. Here at line 58, we're going to have a string. And notice this one at line 59, we're going to write UTF. So we're basically saying write this Unicode text format. And notice our file size increases now to 12. Okay, so it increased to 12. And in fact, you can see with our, when we do the file, um, binary file command, it now thinks not only we have a DAR archive, 
but it has a label associated with it. Now again, we know this is not true. We're just writing this uh, data, but the system thinks it's this particular file with that particular label. Probably the more interesting one is hex dump. Notice when we do the hex dump, you can clearly see the string uh, was written there. You see the internal format of the string, and you can actually see the H-E-L-L-O uh, inside that binary data. Let's do one more. Here we'll write out a double. So notice at line 61 we have 3.14 as a double floating point, and at 62 we say write double. And when we write that out, notice our file size increases by 20. And in fact, you can see we have in there after the hello, you see there's some other binary data, which is actually the representation of the double value. Okay, we've got binary output. Let's look at binary input. So here we're going to use the java.io data input interface. So this interface has essentially the opposite of the ones we just saw. Instead of writing, we can now read. So you can read characters, you can read UTF, UTF which for reading strings, uh, read boolean, read byte, read int, read short, read long, read float, read double. In other words, we can read the primitive types in binary. So let's have the java.io data input interface. It's implemented by this data input stream class it's also implemented by the random access file class and others as well. So we'll be using this data input stream. Notice what it wants when we create an instance of it is an input stream, which in our case we'll be using the file input stream. Okay, let's jump into the code. So our first code sample at 66, I create my file input stream. And then at 67, I create my data input stream. Once I've got my data input stream at line 69, I say read int, and to prove that we read it at line 70, I print that out. And notice it shows indeed when I run this, the value is one, two, three. Okay, we've read the integer value. Now let's try reading the Boolean value. So at line 72, the data input stream read Boolean, and at 73, we print it out, and indeed we find true. Let's do another one. Here we'll read UTF. So we want to read the UTF string and notice at 75 I read it in and then print it out at line 76. Finally, let's read our double. So notice we do the data input stream on line 78. We say read double and again we print it out and indeed we see we have 3.14. So in summary, we've seen how we can do binary file output. We use the java.io data output interface, and we actually, to show a specific example, we use java.io data output stream class. We also saw the binary file input, the java.io data input interface, and the java.io data input stream class. As always, make sure you write the code, run it, and confirm that you understand these new skills related to binary file output and binary file input. I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks as always for watching.